Hello guys, welcome to my channel. So as you know, we are studying about the polysaccharides. So we discussed last video about the glycocalyx, proteoglycans and glycospingolipids. That was just an basic introduction. So now we'll study about specifically about today, that is proteoglycans. So the proteoglycans are the glycose aminoglycans that contains macromolecules of the cell surface and the major component of the ECM that is extracellular matrix. So mammalian cells can produce at least 40 types of proteoglycans, right? Okay, so I will remove this basically this line and we'll continue from there. Okay, so the mammalian cells that can produce about 40, so Mammalian cells can produce about 40 types of proteoglycans. Right? So this this molecules, this proteoglycans, what what are the functions of the proteoglycans? So they act as a tissue organizer, influence various uh, cellular activities such as growth factor activation and addition as well. So the function of proteoglycans, so what they do, they act as a tissue organizer, as a organizer. Right, they act as a tissue organizer, then their function is to influence various cellular activities. They influence various cellular activities. What kind of cellular activities? It's like uh, growth factor activation. Right, so growth factor activation and also the addition, addition. Right, so these are some of the functions of proteoglycans. Right, so the basic structure of proteoglycan is, I will just show you uh, in a simple diagram. So for example, So this part is, for example, chondroitin sulfate. Right? So the brown part is chondroitin sulfate. For example, this part is chondroitin sulfate, and then this part is attached with a tetrasaccharide bridge. If I have any different color, maybe this might. Somewhat. So like this, I think you can see, right? So that is, so this pink portion is a tetrasaccharide bridge. Tetrasaccharide bridge and this tetrasaccharide bridge is covalently attached to a serine residue right here so there it's attached to actually a core protein then glycine then X then again glycine right so on this end this is an amino terminus amino terminus and this here is a Carboxylic terminus, right? So, so the basic uh, proteoglycan structure is uh, that you need consists of a core protein. So it has this core protein, right? What is proteoglycan? It consists of a protein and a carbohydrate. But what kind of carbohydrate? It's glycosaminoglycan. Why glycosaminoglycan is a carbohydrate? Because the hydroxyl group of carbohydrate is replaced 
by the amine group that's why it's called glycosaminoglycan so in this case it's chondroid in surface the glycosaminoglycan right so that is covalently attached to a protein group right that is serine so that makes proteoglycan so the point of attachment for this is the serine residue so this ser is an abbreviation for the amino acid serine residue to which the glycosaminoglycan is attached right through a tetrasaccharide bridge and this is a tetrasaccharide bridge in between right and the serine residue sequence is like generally it's normal the sequence is serine glycine x where x can be any other amino acid and then again glycine right so this is a kind of uh, amino acid residue uh, sequence and although not every protein with this sequence has an attached on glycosamino glycan right right so many proteoglycans are secreted into the extracellular matrix so like they are i will show you like this so for example this is the outer side of the membrane this is the inner part and this is the inside of the membrane and so i will write down outside then this might be the center and this is inside right and the proteoglycan is crossing from inside to outside all right so it's inside as well and it's outside as well so many proteoglycans are actually secreted into an extracellular matrix but some are integral membrane protein as well so what is integral membrane protein so it's like this so they are integrated in the membrane it's not just on the surface of the protein so for example this sheet like the extracellular matrix the basal lamina so that separates the organized group of cells so the basal lamina what the function of it it's actually separate the group of cells from other groups contains a family of core proteins each with a several covalently attached heparin sulfate chains so for example so the line that so this the integral membrane protein so this is a core protein that is this part core protein and this is a core protein so this is the carboxylic terminal end and this is amino terminal end and as we see so it has this has chondroitin in sulfate but in actual so this might have okay let me use this so this might have chondroitin as well so not a single but like for example the brown is our chondroitin sulfate right and uh, let's see if i can sure you can be able to see all that can okay. i will not uh, okay so i think i will use a black only and it also has an heparin sulfate okay so i'll mark it down here chondroitin sulfate and this is sulfate right sorry guys so i thought i was recording but i was not recording so basically so there are like two families of membrane heparin sulfate proteoglycans so this is the one basic structure that i draw here so that is an extracellular matrix right this is an extracellular matrix or the basal lamina so that is that separates an organized group of cells right this basal lamina is separating the organized group of cells from one another that contains a family of core protein so this is a core protein with several covalently attached heparin sulfate chain so this has a several attached heparin sulfate chain so there are actually two families of membrane heparin sulfate proteoglycans so there are two families major families of heparin sulfate proteoglycans so the one is syndicant and the other is glycans so the one i draw this diagram so this is for a syndicant why they are syndicants because the syndicants have a single transmembrane domain so this is a single transmembrane domain and an extracellular domain so this is an extracellular domain as it's an outside that bears for uh, three to five chains of heparin sulfate so this you can see we draw three 
it has three to five chains of heparin sulfate and in some cases chondroitin sulfate and sulfate as well so it has chondroitin sulfate right so this is a example of syndicate and what is glypicans right, so i will draw a diagram for glypicans maybe okay i will draw my maybe here a smaller one so it's the same as outside and inside right center of a membrane so i will write it down this is the membrane center this is an outside this is an inside to so the glypican actually so i will explain to you and let me draw that first okay like that all right this is actually attached with some covalent bonds. This is a globular domain. All right, and this is the carboxylic end. As usual. This is Oops, plus NST. all right so you can see here so the glypicans are actually attached to the membrane so like this is an integral part of the membrane as you can see but the glypicans is attached to the membrane by a gpi lipid anchor this is a lipid anchor that you can see here right so this is attached by this so this is a lipid portion and this is attached by this gpi anchor so here it's all the protein but here this part is a lipid and then this is a core protein right so and this gpi anchor is actually phosphatidyl inositol right so i will write it down here this part is phosphatidyl stop right so this is attached covalently by this lipid anchor to this core protein right and all glycans uh, all glypicans have a 14 conserved cysteine residues in this protein all this is a core protein and it has all the uh, glypicans have 14 conserved cysteine residues which form so this in the protein, the cysteine residues form disulfide bond. So this is the brown marks that I draw. So that's a disulfide bond. That's why the protein is like this to stabilize the protein and either two or three glycose aminoglycan chains attach near the, so there might be, so this is a carboxylic end. This is I right here, right here. So this is a carboxylic. This is an amino acid on the protein. So there might be either two or three glycose aminoglycan chains. So like this heparin or chondroitin, whichever it might be, attached. It will be attached near this glyco uh, carboxylic terminals close to the sugar, right? Uh, sorry, close to the membrane surface. Wait. So this. This part, the glycose aminoglycan part of outside of the membrane. So what is the use of proteoglycans? So the protease in the extracellular matrix, that the protease is an enzyme. Remember that here, I will write it down. Protease in ECM. So this is an splitting enzyme that can split, right? Right, so the protease is an enzyme that can break down the proteins into smaller polypeptides right so what the protease in the extra so the, this is the extracellular matrix right outside of the membrane so it has a protease enzyme right so the protease in the extracellular matrix that cuts the protein close to the membrane surface so for example this syndican so like it will the protease will act here it can act on this near to the membrane surface protease i will write it down here protease so this can act on this side and for here so this is attached here right protein and lipid 
so it will attack here and can separate close to the membrane surface releasing syndicate ectodomains so this the outer part is an ectodomain right so this is an entire protein and as we know protein has different domains right so this protease will separate the ectodomain the outside of the membranes releasing syndicate ectodomain so for example if this syndicate is splitted from here it will release syndicate ectodomains and for here so this is a lipid part sorry uh, i was wrong so it is actually phospholipase so lipase right as this is a lipid part of the glycans right lipid part of the glycans so the phospholipase that's the enzyme uh, that's the enzyme to break the connection to the membrane lipid right and release the glycans ectodomains right so this what what is the reason for this mechanism so this mechanism provides a way for a cell to change its surface features quickly right like shedding is highly regulated so this is called a shedding like when this is separated it shreds the outer part so it's called shedding is a uh, highly regulated so this is highly regulated and is activated in proliferating cells so this is not normally done it's only activated in proliferating cell such as a cancer cells right so the proteoglycan sh shedding the proteoglycan shedding is involved in cell to cell recognition and addition and proliferation and differentiation of cell right so the proteo glycan sharing is involved so this is involved in cell to cell recognition by right? cell to cell recognition and addition cell to cell recognition addition and in the proliferation and in proliferation and differentiation of cells right so this is the function of proteoglycan sharing and numerous chondroitin sulfate and dermatin sulfate proteoglycan also exist so this is heparin sulfate and chondroitin sulfate <coughs> sorry so but like there are chondroitin sulfate and dermatin sulfate uh, proteoglycan that also exist some as a membrane bound entities other as a secreted products in the extracellular matrix all right so the glycose aminoglycan chain can bind to a variety of extracellular ligands so this is glycose aminoglycan chains right the heparin sulfate chondroitin sulfate right so the glycose aminoglycan chain can bind to a variety of extracellular ligands and thereby modulate the ligands interaction with specific receptors on the cell surface right as this is outside and it might when it shed so it might get attached to a cell surface that has a receptors that is particularly matching with the ligands of the extracellular glycose aminoglycan chain so the detailed studies of heparin sulfate actually demonstrate a domain structure that is not as random so like what it says is some domains typically 3 to 8 disaccharide long differ from neighboring domain in sequence and inability to bind a specific protein so for example like so for example like this brown part this is a one domain of heparin sulfate then our black one right and then again the brown and then the black one right so for example like this is some domains of heparin sulfate chains like this is a heparin sulfate chain that's a glycose aminoglycan right so that's some domains typically is 3 to 8 disaccharide long so some domains are actually 3 to 8 disaccharide long right 
So a single domain can be three to eight saccharide disaccharide long. Differ from neighboring domains in a sequence. So it will differ like this is a one domain. This is a single other domain. This is a one domain. This is the so these different colors are different domains, right? So and this domain and this domain is differing in the sequence, and is also in differing in the ability to bind to a specific proteins. So that means like. Like there are highly sulfated domains, so they are called an NS domain, right? NS domain. So some are highly sulfated domain, like for example the brown part. Alternate with the domains having unmodified, like like this highly sulfated domains are alternating with this. For example, so this is an unmodified domain. So that means it has. Here, GLCNAC. So that is an acetyl glycosamine and, and GLCA. So this is an acetyl glycosamine and this is D glucuronic acid. So that's a common chain in a glycosaminoglycan. That's the repeating sequence of the glycosaminoglycan. So for example, this domain is highly sulfuric domain. So it can alternate with the other domain that is just unmodified with, it's not modification. So it's just simple and acetyl glycosamine and having D-glucuronic acid residues, right? That is, for example, we will call it as an NA domain, right? NA, NA domain. Right. So the exact pattern of sulfation in this NH domain depends on a particular proteoglycan. So what what kind of proteoglycan is it? Like is it like chondroitin, dermatan, or heparin? Right. So it depends on the particular proteoglycan. Given the number of possible modification of this GLNAC and IDOA, that's an idiomatic acid dimer. So at least 32 different disaccharide units are possible so that means it depends on the exact pattern of the sulfation in the NS domain of the proteoglycan and so the given the number of possible modification that NS domain can have so there are at least 32 different disaccharide units are possible so furthermore the same core protein can display different heparin sulfate structure when synthesized in different cell types so this Core protein can display different heparin sulfate structures when synthesized in different cell types.